Hello and welcome to my 0% Growth playthrough of Genealogy of the Holy War. You're about to witness a truly historic event, which is Deidre actually doing something useful for once in the history of Fire Emblem 4. Deidre is widely considered to be, or in contention for, second worst unit in Genealogy of the Holy War after Arden. She leaves early, has poor movement, has negative avoid, is squishy, Pretty much all she's good for is silencing here and there. However, here she's actually going to save a few turns. There's some weird things in this game. So this part is assaulting MacLilly Castle is one of the hardest parts of the game on 0% growth to LTC. I need to clear it quickly, but with only that tiny group you see up there, as well as Laxus and her knights later on, to clear the path to Sigurd so that I can seize the earth as early as possible. And this is difficult for many reasons. First of all, there are five Ballista, which can target my units, and though Ballista are normally very weak and hard to dodge, for some reason the developers decide that every tile in that pass should be a road tile, making it hard to dodge, and they can target squishy units like Daedre. Furthermore, Cavalry comes later, which can use Kanto to pile onto units. To deal with this, I have to exploit the prayer skill that Daedre has, and also her live rank. Though these units that are charging through the pass don't have the mites that conveniently knock her into prayer range, dealing 17, 14, and 4 damage apiece, with her live skill she can get hit and then restore health so that she can be easily knocked into live range, which as you see soon, she was knocked down to 12 health by the Ballista, and then, and now has healed up to 19, meaning that if she fights with either the Archers or the Myrmidons, she'll be knocked down to 2 health, which gives her a hefty boost to avoid meaning she can take a lot of hits. So in the north, there are a few things going on. First, Ethlyn is has to return Levin and Sylvia. They both have things to do. Do is scooping up money, and, and Noish is tagging along just because there are a few villages with useful items that uh, do might not be able to hit in the time. I haven't planned it for it that far. Medir is also moving towards a cliff near Augusty, where he will, with his 1-2 to two range over the cliff, hope to weaken the onrushing cavalry and perhaps bait out the armor knights near Augusty. But, the, but the chapter is becoming pretty focused at this point. There isn't too much stuff going on on the sidelines. So Sigurd buys the light sword here because it's better 1-2 to two range than his current weapon. And he sells the shield ring because Quan is soon going to need the is soon going to need the shield ring and the hero lance to help deal with the law of cavalry. This gives him the power to one round cavalry and to take quite a few hits, which is invaluable. So they're both moving out. They only reach, reach the fight at the tail end of this chapter, and mostly prove instrumental in taking Augusty. So here is a long bit of RNG abuse to help Laxus through the arena. Oh wait, never mind, that comes later. This is a shorter bit. Laxus needs a bit of help to clear the first three fights at the arena with the elite ring so she can get experience. So while in the third fight it seems like she's completely outgunned, uh, she has a weapon called the prayer sword which when equipped um, makes, gives the fighter the prayer skill which helps her clear that fight and or at least have a chance to win that fight. So this is very useful to help Lacus and some other units clear the arena. It can only be used by females in theory but there's a glitch that allows it to be used by men, which will come into use much, much later into the playthrough. But for now, it's not really important. And so I have to do some RNG abuse, because even with the massive prayer boost Daedre is going to get, she has negative 10 avoid, and those enemies have really high hit. So they have about a 20% chance to hit a piece, and... A lot of them are going to be piling onto her, all with two attacks, so it takes a while to RNG abuse. So please skip until 457.
Alright, so now you can see Daedre just dodge tanking this entire group. Prayer is a ridiculous skill. And when you're using her prayer abuse, she's actually very good because Aura, though it's really heavy and is usually bad because of that, it has such high might that it just knocks all of these units within easy kill range, which is useful for everyone. It, so you see Lex over there, and he seems somewhat out of place in here. He's, well, you'll see what's going to happen with him. He isn't needed over there, but he makes this strategy a lot more reliable, so I'm including him. And more, Ethlyn, I thought she might have time to pick up some uh, items, but, some gold, but she doesn't. She can get all her, her inheritance needs for, leaf can be covered by a cash dump from Quan, though. Do head south, because Do I think is quite an underrated character. Although he's terrible at fighting, his money dumping utility is good. Oh, and Arden finally gets her pursuit ring and proceeds to wait on that peninsula for the rest of the chapter. I don't know what he's really done to deserve his beach vacation. It seems that Sigurd or Quan probably deserve to be there, but oh well, he gets to sit this one out. Well, oh. Well, he sits pretty much the whole generation out. I think I have something I'll have him do in the final chapter, but besides that, not much. So, I have to earn G abuse a bit here to make it so that Lex can hit. His accuracy is terrible. He's not a very good unit on 0% growth. Even though I could probably get him to promote rather easily. If I put some effort in, it wouldn't be worth it because axes are terrible. His defense isn't that great. This is a somewhat unreliable enemy phase because Daedre is within range of a lot of Ballista, but they really like to attack the other units as well, so and have low accuracy to begin with, so it's not terrible. It just takes it just takes time. And you'll see a rather tragic event on this next phase. It's not it's not good. I cry every time. So the ballista starts shooting. Daedre dodges. Goodbye, Lex. You will be missed. I don't need him at all later on in the playthrough. He doesn't do anything. Holland can give Ira the hero sword, and he's useless at this point. Maybe he could do a tiny bit of chipping here and there, but whatever. He made that... On earlier takes where I wasn't willing to sacrifice Lex, I had to RNG abuse huge amounts to get cleared on time, so I figured that for the sake of condensing this video and my own saying, hey, I could just sacrifice him. So Ethlyn here returns both Sylvia and Levin. They have a little bit more to do this chapter, so they need to be back there. And. Here is one of the more, here I managed to get her down to one health. How it works is I have her hit one mage, which deals four damage to her, putting her down to 15. Then on enemy phase, she'll be hit by a ballista, 14 damage, knocking her down to one, making it pretty easy for her to dodge all those, dodge and deal huge amounts of damage to all those lance knights. So, it's good that worked out there. For some reason, I don't know why the AI does this, or whether this happens again in the game, but for some reason, the when the guards of MacLily are all almost dead, they like to run away, which is the problem. So, he, so here, a tiny bit of RNG abuse, because Lance Knights have around 10 hit on, on her. But yeah, she, there she's knocked into one health, and now she won't be getting hit. Prayer really is an amazing skill. Even a terrible character like Daedre can do great things with it. But at least, but normally you wouldn't have to use her, it's just because zero percent growth. If Holland and Ire had gotten level ups from their arena fights, they probably wouldn't have too much trouble with some healing support. And Dew begins to scoop up money. He always does. I might need to use Norsh to pick up the 
iron cutter later on in the chapter. But for a good thing now is that is that all our forces are coming together. We now have Quan and Sigurd near the front lines as well to help carve through. And even better, we have Lacus's knights. Although they tend to, when most people use them, they get super annoyed because they just run around, do stupid things, and get killed, and don't have the best offense. They can tank a lot, and they, and most importantly, their their meager offense is enough to finish off a lot of the enemies that Daedra is weakened, which means fewer attacks that I need to deal with on the enemy phase, which is always a good thing because it just makes things more reliable, and. Though I'm willing to rig, if a strategy can be made so that I don't need to rig, it's a lot better. Here I'm RNG abusing, not really for survivability though partially, but to make it so that the knights aren't idiots and don't run into range of the boss's sleeve staff, which can stun them for a while, and will lead to all the on-rushing cavalry attacking them, which has the potential to choke up the pass and make a 19 turn of this castle possible, so I wanted them to make so that they didn't charge forward and be silly. As you can see, Deidre recovered health to 17, which means I can once again knock her into prayer range. This is a recurring theme of the chapter. Ethlyn uses her return ring because she'll be needed again. And now some more RNG abuse is needed so that Quan can proc continue. We just really need to punch through at this point. Because a lot of those can seem to be dealt with. Sigurd really looks like he's in trouble, so I get him healed this turn. Uh, unfortunately, even with the magic ring, he can't run around these things from 1 to 2 range. It would be great, but... RNG abuse come, becomes much more important here. I, for instance, I need Ira to proc Astra to cleanly get through that night. She can actually take out almost every enemy in this map with an Astra if she's using an Iron Blade, which is very useful. This is the one chapter where Ira is actually doing something in this playthrough. And once again, I'm throwing Daedre out on the front lines but it's not actually really risky at all because the knights will kill those two mages and the archers and she'll get knocked down to three health by the ballista rocking prayer not in a super low range but she's also gets a lover bonus from Sigurd a leadership bonus from Sigurd and Laxus has a skill called charisma which makes that all units within three squares of her get plus ten to hit and plus ten to evade so Daedre's not really in trouble at all here. And now it's a simple setup. I could do it in a different way, but I decided to do it but because the RNs just worked out only by having Daedre go next to the gate and have a lover crit with Sigurd to take out the boss. Also because he needs to sell the sleep staff for money. He needs a lot for Celis. So this is completed in 19 turns. As you can see from Sigurd moving his maximum range every turn, this is the fastest possible. A 18 turn of the castle would be possible, but once again, I would have had to 8 clear turn here, which is impossible.